Uh, Congressman, what do you make of the super Congress and the fact that uh, Congress was not able to even be involved in the Libya operation? Well, it, of course, it, to me, it's an outrage. First, the super Congress is uh, some some newfangled invention by the people who couldn't solve the problems up there and weren't willing to cut anything. So they're just going to pick 12 people who are supposed to, you know, pick out the things to really cut. So I have uh, no confidence that they'll achieve anything. And even if they did, it'd be risky because why should we turn the whole Congress over to 12 individuals to make these decisions? So uh, I, I, I don't anticipate that they're going to come up with a solution. If, if they did, they'll probably be raising taxes and they probably won't cut any money away from some, some of this militarism going on there. They haven't even been brave enough to cut the money from Libya. So I, I don't expect a whole lot to happen from that super Congress. Uh, Congressman, um, is there any recourse with Obama telling Congress, I don't need your authority to go to war in Libya. I have the U.N. giving me the authority, and I, quote, do this for their credibility. I mean, are, are we just going to, I guess, sit here collectively? I mean, I know you've been fighting it and just uh, allow the power of the purse and the power of war to more and more move to the executive? Yeah, I'm afraid that people aren't going to demand it and the Congress won't respond. And uh, there's a few of us, you know, that file suit and we try to fight it and vote against the funding, but we never get the majority. But, you know, it's, it's not like it's brand new. I know this is an outrage, but, you know, it's pretty much what's been going on since Truman. Truman actually, you know, did that on Korea and of course, we still are spending money on Korea. Uh, so on, at that times, they would come, a president would come and get token approval. They never get a declaration of war. It's just a token approval to do what I want. If I want to fight a war, I can, and Congress is expected to finance it. So uh, we've, we've given up a lot over the last 100 years, and I think the responsibility of the Congress to uh, be the final decision maker on going to war, that's been long gone lost, but... That's one of the things we've all been fighting for is try to restore that principle uh, to our country. Recently, uh, shifting into monetary issues, uh, you had Bernanke on the hot seat. And you said, is gold money? And he said, no, it's not. Uh, their, their counterfeit Federal Reserve notes are. Now we've seen two weeks ago on Meet the Press, uh, the former head of the Federal Reserve Greenspan, I'm sure you saw it, say, hey, we're not going to default. We'll just print money. But isn't that a form of default? That's that inflation tax you've been talking about and another way of cheating people that have have bought the treasuries uh, i mean it's 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 looking more and more like hitler in his bunker to watch the federal reserve giggling uh, about what they're doing yeah once the country gets this indebted uh, they never pay their bills they can't work their way out theoretically we could you know if we did all the things necessary but in reality countries uh, don't and especially if you end up over 40% uh, of the money you need to operate if you have to borrow it, it's at a point uh, almost of no return. So they have to liquidate the debt. Uh, first, they won't admit we're in bankruptcy uh, because they've been able to pawn it off of the American taxpayers by raising taxes and inflating the currency and borrowing around the world. But we literally are bankrupt. So the debt has to be liquidated. And it is true, we won't default on the debt in the sense that... Uh, uh, they they won't pay off the holders of bonds. They'll always be paid off, just like the holders of the obligations for Social Security will always send a check. But what they don't have control on is the value of that money they send. Matter of fact, it is a deliberate policy of the Fed, and Bernanke has uh, essentially admitted this, that uh, the only way we can get out of this is inflation. Some of the, some of the liberal economists are saying what, uh, what this economy really needs – is an inflation rate of about six percent, and uh, so he's act they're actually encouraging the inflation in order for the real debt to go down. Obviously, if your dollar loses fifty percent uh, in purchasing power, your real debt goes down fifty percent. So, fifty percent inflation, which they're liable to get, the real debt goes from fourteen down to seven. But the real problem is, is everybody doesn't suffer equally. Some people suffer more. Some people actually benefit, and the middle class generally gets wiped out, and if they want to aim for 5, 10, or 15, or 30 percent inflation, 
uh, they don't have control of it, it may turn into 100% inflation and it'll get out of control. And that's what I think is our greatest danger right now. Congressman, it's been said by a lot of uh, pundits that you're a prophet. I think Al Sharpton even said that. And it, they can't deny that basically everything you've talked about has now come true. Uh, and they say Ron Paul's on a mission. He's certainly educating people. So at least they're admitting that you are in a war of ideas uh, and that you're trying to change the course of history. And I would say successfully doing that, win, lose, or draw. But but getting some into the campaign, even when you were on Neil Cavuto yesterday or a few days ago, I saw it on YouTube last night, not sure when, you know, he kept saying, too bad you can't win. I sure love you. Too bad you can't win. So it was kind of a back slap in a smiley way. I'm not attacking Cavuto. But, but the issue is, in every poll I've seen, I watch it, you've been number one, number two, or number three for the last six months. Uh, and you, you 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 win the New Hampshire straw poll, you get a, a, a technical tie, even with her buying the votes in Iowa, and they put out this hoax that you can't win. Uh, but then, meanwhile, and, and this is what I want you to speak to, you've got Romney, who's the Obamacare author, his model. Uh, it's now come out that not only was Perry the campaign manager in Texas for Gore, but that now we learn in 93 he gave speeches and wrote letters endorsing Hillary care worse than Obamacare uh, and forced Gardasil shots, sir. So I know you're a gentleman, but uh, it all hinges, in my political opinion, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you have much greater gravitas than I, on you going after these people uh, because they are basically like Obama, but they look more like Ronald Reagan. I mean, what do you say about these two establishment hacks that the system is exalting as our, you know, as our uh, new leader? But generally, over the years, I've allowed their policies to speak for themselves, and uh, their policies are now failing wholesale. That's why our voice is growing in uh, strength and and uh, credibility, because everything they say and do and advocate is is a total failure, whether it's the wars they fight or the printing of the money or running up these debts and, and all these proposals for the bureaucracy. I mean, just think of the size of government over the last uh, the growth of the government over these last 50 years has been horrendous. So I think that that is such glaring evidence that uh, you all, I don't, you know, I don't, uh, you know, relish the thought of just uh, really accusing them of all sorts of things because they're all to blame and it's bigger than one person. I understand, but those are the guys that they're selling your voters, mainline Republicans, libertarians, conservatives. I mean, Rick Perry has gone from doubling you know, the size of Texas government in 10 years to to saying basically that he's, you know, I'm the real Ron Paul. I'm Rick Perry. And, uh, you know, uh, the Federal Reserve is almost treacherous or treasonous. I mean, he's trying to become you. So what do you say to that? Well, I think that people have to realize and look at his record. And when they look at his record, they know that he's a flip-flopper. I mean, how can what he say uh, be much different than what Romney has done with his med medical care system up in Massachusetts, uh, and you're right, uh, uh, Barry has endorsed uh, Hillary's program, so, <laughs> but the American people, uh, you know, I guess one reason why don't, it seems so obvious to me, why does anybody even have to lecture people? Why don't they just wake up and look at history and investigate a little bit? But I think more and more is coming out. Uh, I, you know, I, I think Perry, you know, is going to be a very, very formidable politician, and he may well walk off with it. But uh, it's the sad state of affairs if the people don't wake up and look at their records. You know, how, how can they be so happy about, like like you said, he, he was the chairman for uh, Al Gore in Texas in, what, 1980, I guess. 1988, handing roads over to the center of Spain, Bilderberg Group meetings, forced inoculations. I mean, the fact is, he's doing all this stuff now, not just in 93, praising Hillary. What person in their right mind would support Hillary care? I mean, I was I was 18 years old when they were trying to ram through or 17, and I knew it was bad when I was 17. So right there, it shows he's got major judgment problems. People in Washington that I've known for years and those generally who run for presidency, the only thing that motivates them is power. And it's it's not sound ideas. It's not freedom, and uh, they're they're locked in on this power struggle. Both parties are this way. Uh, the parties pretend they're different, and they have different uh, rhetoric. But you know, regardless of which uh, 
which party's in, in control, they end up doing the same thing. So it's it's only the power and the and the bill and the ability to provide special benefits to those special interests that put them in the power. Yes, sir. The, the reason why things are so different today is we're bankrupt, and that's why uh, this is all going to come to an end. So the big question is is who's going to pick up the pieces now, and who's going to lead the charge away from the drift where we have gone to, you know, in the last really 100 years, whether it's foreign policy or monetary policy, IRS, and, and, the, um, and, the, and the Fed, and all these things have gone on for a long time. But I think it's coming to an end. And, yes, sir. Uh, and, and that's why what we're doing now, all of us, you know, is so important. Uh, and uh, I think their failures are going to speak for themselves. It's, it's going to be the, their failures are shouting out very loud about uh, uh, how poorly – uh, their ideas are working. We've only got about four minutes left with you, sir, so I want to move quickly here. Obviously, when you say he may well walk away with it, you are within striking distance. If we can just expose the hoax that is Rick Perry and then the other minion, Mitt Romney, you are going to have it, sir. And, and it's perfect timing. You're the man of the hour. God has literally you know, given you to us that you've been right all these years, never compromised, right as America's collapsing. Here you are with the constitutional, tried and true, common sense solutions. But if you do lose, you still win by educating people. Uh, but but uh, you say that you're going to go home after this when, you're, when your term is up. If you don't win the presidency, uh, if you don't win the presidency and leave, sir, are you still going to write and speak? Oh, I, I wouldn't know what to do if I didn't do that. I've always thought that... Uh I've always done the same thing, whether I'm in office or out of office or whatever, and the goals have always been the same. Uh, the elected position has generally been secondary. But the one thing is, if you're in the business of trying to change the course of a country, uh, you can do a much better job if you're in office. And obviously, you know, as president, I can do a much better job than if I'm uh, just looking for a format and wondering where I'll go next. So, uh, no, I, it's more or less out of my hands. I just do what I have to do, and we'll see how things come out. So we'll still be able to have you pop in from time to time, even if you do retire. I'm going to be around. You Very are. Much, uh, you are awesome, sir. Uh, final questions here, uh, because you know, this is why I know you're so real, not just that you don't compromise and not just your gr perfect constitutional voting record. I hope everybody gets behind you. Campaign for Liberty as well, with all the other great candidates. Uh, donate at ronpaul2012.com. Knock on doors. Uh, get involved in your party precincts. Become a delegate. Ron Paul can win and will win if we get behind him. He's put his hat in the ring and is pouring his heart and soul out. It's up to us to get behind Ron Paul or wish later by gnashing our teeth that we would have. But, sir, in closing, last year at a Campaign for Liberty event, you talked about a coup in America. You said the CIA has been caught shipping drugs in. We've had a coup in America. I want you to specifically, because I get a lot of questions about that to this day, what you exactly meant by that. But uh, I, I imagine if you pin me down, it, the literal sense of what a coup generally is, probably not quite that. But for the CIA to really be running the show, I was referring to the CIA at the time, because it's so secretive. It's, it's uh, somewhat like the secrets of the Federal Reserve in finances. It's so hard to find out what's going on. But the CIA uh, is involved in war. They, they are involved in military activity. Uh, they pick targets from uh, Langley in in uh, Alexandria, you know, in in Virginia. They can shoot missiles to any spot in the world, generally killing a lot of people they shouldn't be killing and missing the ones they're trying to target. So therefore, it is totally secret. This, this is even out of uh, you know out of the realm of what Obama does when he says, "Well, I'm going in and I'm just going to be with NATO and I'm going to start bombing Libya." I think uh, this is uh, very serious. And now we have. The DOD person, uh, Petraeus, going over to the CIA, and then uh, the CIA uh, head going over to the military. It, it's such a mixed deal that uh, we don't know exactly what's happening, but I know the CIA has been involved in so many elections around the world. They pick and choose dictators. I'm sure they're in, uh, I don't think there's any doubt, they're very much involved in these revolutions going on in the Mediterranean, and we're just out trying to pick, pick dictators. So I, don't, I just don't like all this secrecy and government. 
out of the control yes, of uh, the people who are responsible. Well, Congressman, we've got to let you go. I want to ask you one last question and just remind folks to get behind Ronnie, uh, Ron Paul 2012com Speaking of FEMA, you've been criticized for saying we don't need FEMA, but all they do is confiscate guns at Katrina. That's really not the federal government's job, I guess. But you were asked by a reporter, Robert Wannick, a few weeks ago in Iowa about the H.R. 645 National Emergency Centers Establishment Act. And you said, yeah, that's their goal. They're setting up the stage for violence in this country. No doubt about it. Responded Paul. Sir, uh, in conclusion, what did you mean by that? Who are they? I'm not even sure I recall that exact conversation, but, um, you know, the, the FEMA is in charge of all emergencies. So whether it's a natural disaster or whatever, uh, they're in charge of our land. They're land planners. They're economic planners. And, uh, and they're, they're, they're planning for any provision. And they, I think the establishment of people in Washington, both Republicans and Democrats, no history, just like we do, that you can have a uh, breakdown of law and order. So pe the people, unfortunately, will be begging for uh, for a stabilization, and they'll be inviting the federal government to come in to stabilize things. So I think they're making plans along those lines to how, how they take care of a problem when there's a breakdown of law and order. And they'd like that power grab. That's, that's their goal. It's all about power. Congressman Ron Paul, um, ronpaul2012.com, sir. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Okay, Alex. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. Uh, there goes Congressman Ron Paul, ladies and gentlemen. And I always feel guilty when I call up and uh, get him on the show because I happen to know how hard he's working. Uh, but uh, there he was, and that was definitely a powerful interview. Uh, wow, that is the real deal. Perfect constitutional voting record. You claim you're an American, you claim you stand for America, that's it. In fact, I really have to agree. I admire Ron Paul more than anybody else out there alive, unless you're talking about my dad or somebody or my grandpa's. But politically, he's it. And if you want founding father material, uh, who was it? Lou Rockwell said, we haven't had something like this since the time of Jefferson. He has never compromised. He works eight hours a day, admittedly sleeping less than six hours. He might take off, I've been told by a lot of folks that know him more than I, one and a half, maybe two days a month, all the rest of the time, stoic research, radio interviews. All he does is exercise for one hour in the morning. He doesn't even hardly eat anything. I've been at events with Ron Paul's, he doesn't eat. He, he barely sleeps. And you can see it in his face. Uh, you've got to pray for that guy. I mean, that's why he gets demonized and attacked. And the COINTELPRO says he's not real. You're not real. You're scum. You're filth. You work for the globalist. We'll be right back. Stay with us.